Well, good afternoon, everybody. This is Peter Ratson. I'm here with Jill Ratson, and we are going to talk to you today about building the optimal college list. Material today is relevant to families with children of all ages in high school. What you'll see out there, most of the information that's available, it'll tell you what you should do, but not necessarily how, and so or how it would work with you. And what we've noticed is that in the typical problem, either whether it's reading about how to make a college list or how to apply to college or even pay for it, and it's through a book or watching a video course, it's not the same experience than when you're actually having to go through it yourself, when you're in front of your own children in your own home and trying to get real world results. And so what we have developed in our training is something that's more real world and strategies that are coming right from the trenches, from being there, from being in the thick of it with our clients, with our own children, and rolling up our sleeves, getting dirty, and that you're learning from our own trial and error as well. So today's training as Peter mentioned, is about building an optimal college list. First of all, what you're going to get today is what to do, as I just mentioned, and there are three phases to properly build a college list, and they're discovery, research, and edit, which we'll get to in a second. You're going to hear about what if, and, and that's the result. So what will an optimal list look like at the end if you follow that process? We call that our diamond model, and Peter's going to explain that. We talk about why. What's the point of doing all this, and, and when you need to do that? And, and, and I guess the best way to say this is you don't need to have a 36 on the ACT or an 800 on the math section of the SAT to understand who's going to have the better odds of gaining acceptance at college today. And it's not a student who's got 25 schools ultimately that they're applying to that they've chosen rather indiscriminately. It's the student who has carefully constructed over time and whittled down a list to about seven. And we're going to talk about that because that happens over time. It is a process. And there is a reason that we call it a process, and unlike other things that we talk about in college planning, this is a process and not a product. So we'll talk about that. And most importantly, we're not going to leave you hanging, we're going to talk about how. The communication strategies at home, different techniques you can try, rules of the game that we want you to follow, resources, tools you can use so that you'll have an exact plan to implement what you're learning. So let's just go ahead and get started. Um, always a good thing. I, I have to share a quick story with you. I, those of you who know this, uh, our office has this amazing view. We're in South Florida. Um, unfortunately, it's a view of, a, of our parking lot. But one of the fun things about our parking lot is that we can spot a new family who's happening to come see us almost by the way the car pulls into the lot. You can see the tension is palpable just in choosing the spot. And you can see it even before the car doors open, and then you hear them from our office slamming shut, and the teenagers looking at their parents with a look, mom's already frustrated, dad's ready to turn around and go home. And so we know that this is a stressful process. And the first thing we want to do is set some levels and expectations. Um, we're going to give you a plan, and that should dial back some of the stress. Because I know that it doesn't seem that way to your child, and perhaps to you as well right now, but choosing and getting into the college, it's not a matter of life and death. It's just, it's not. Um, the, the goal is to have options. There is no one best college for your student, and that's the first thing we need to debunk today. There are many great options, and, and we're going to, and the goal is to have an open mind, and we're going to talk about how to help kind of bring and integrate that into your philosophy at home to make it easier to build the right list later. So today's lesson is all about building the perfect college less, list. rather. Um, and the first lesson, I guess, for you is that there is absolutely no such thing as the perfect college list because there's no such thing as the perfect college. Um, we know it's anxiety-ridden enough. High school is. Forget thinking about college. High school itself is. So instead of a perfect college list, today we're going to talk about a perfect college list building formula. Um, these are rules to live by and a way that you can come up with a short list of colleges by the end of 11th grade and certainly before the summer ends for rising 12th graders. Not right away, that, but these are schools that will maximize all of your child's opportunities so that they'll have multiple options to choose for admissions. Um, they're going to have schools that offer the right type of academic environment, the right social experiences that you're looking for, your values and theirs that has the right level of graduation outcomes, and that means years and what the students are doing up when they graduate, and that has the inclination and the ability to meet your budget. That's important. That's why there's not one 
perfect list because there's no two families are alike. In fact, no two students within one family are alike. We know that. So we're going to do all this with the least amount of angst possible.